The men of Rohan defend Eras here in today's Dawnless Day siege battle. Their kingdom has come under siege from evil and they now must defend their capital and hope to save Rohan here at the walls of Eras. What's up guys and welcome back. We're here with another glorious Dawnless Day siege for you today and this is a 2v2 here. We do have uh, yeah, Rohan here defending alongside the Elves of Linden. So the Elves, have, I guess, have also come to honour their last alliance agreement not only at Helm's Deep but also at Edoras here. So yes, we have more uh, Noldorian Elves but instead of... Um, well, actually, no, sorry. Wait a minute. The uh, Elves at... Um, the Elves at uh, Helm's Deep weren't... Uh, Noldorian, they were, I don't know, like uh, Sylvan or something like that, I think. So, yeah, you know, maybe Nold the Noldorian elves also remembered that uh, alliance that they had. But they are facing off here against, uh, we have the Eastlings over here, and then the other army is Umbar. So, yes, it's men, evil men of the East that Strong have come titans. to Rohan here Enemy to attack uh, Eras. But, yes, with some clan guards there getting ready. I'm a bit worried that we are seeing quite a few clan guards because on attack, spears are not that great. This team though, Umbar though has remembered that memo that he's on the attack and has brought some Umbar usurpers and he's going straight on in those early retainers. Trying to hack and slash his way through these boys. Rohan recently made it into a top five list of uh, best land battle factions, but I don't think it's so great in a siege battle. In a siege battle, they have some decent units, but the they're enemy. not as well equipped as other factions are for a siege battle. Umbar has certainly got to be up there as one of those better equipped factions. Probably also these things as well. They have some decent shock infantry that can carve through spear lines. But uh, yes, as we do have Umbar here, you can tell we are using the last breath sub mod. If you haven't checked out that epic sub mod, which added adds so much to the uh, world of Lord of the Rings on a Teletoto war, then uh, yeah, do check out my uh, link in the description that is where you can go onto the scene workshop and get the last alliance sub mod it's definitely worth getting it is as a whole bunch of new factions one of which it is umbar you can see we've got axe stains now they're setting up getting ready to deal with these umbar usurpers that is going to be a very unfair match rohan is not going to win that fight there at all these axe stains are not great at all most of Rohan's infantry is not that great in, in melee. The only retainers are probably the best. And even they are not, not that great. They struggle against the Umbar Usurpers. And it's not even the best sword infantry that Umbar has available. We have nasty stuff back here, including the golden Alfrazen Asgar. Looking very gold now. Uh, yeah, very, very shiny. But yes, the Alfrazen Asgar. And then we also have other nasty stuff back here, like Aduna Nakori, which are literally just men head to toe in steel with a massive old broadsword. They do look very, very imposing. Um, but yeah, we also got Corsairs. We've got Wards of Rune, a whole lot of Veriags as well to come forward. So yeah, they are getting ready to go in, it seems. It looks like we've also got uh, some Carnage Sentries. And these things being gifted to the, the Rohan over here. And here we go. Rohan is using some of its famed cavalry. We have Erling Knights here riding out and they are going to try and go maybe go after those kind of sentries it's not a bad target but uh they do have javelins these guys so also the javelins are pretty good anti-cav units and it looks like the defenders is going to let them uh, let the evil men here the eastlings have the lower levels and they're focusing down these rooting savages a good unit to shoot down actually uh, with noldorian artists here as well and these are very light shot in the tree so yeah these guys are very vulnerable to a bow uh they're going to get hit. And oh, we're going to see a rear charge. So the cab went in for a rear charge and was kind of trapped. Uh, the Umbai servers. I don't know if. Uh, it looks like it's done a bit of damage. They are now losing and the, the numbers are dropping. I don't know if it's really doing much in the way of damage. These early men at arms need to uh, just hold the line. And I feel like the early knights need to maybe sally out, uh, out of the gate again. And yeah, try and repeat that charge. City is starting to burn. This, I'm sure, is not going to be the only piece of Edoras that burns here today. There you go. How collapsed? I just got a whole bunch of people there. Mainly on by Usurpers, by looks of it. Yeah, let me know who you're rooting for. Are you rooting for the defenders, the forces of good, or are you rooting for the attackers, the forces of evil? And it looks like actually the early retainers have managed to win that fight there against the Umbai Usurpers. So that's a bit of a win, but a fresh. Usurper is ready to go into the breach. The cab again cycles in. This Usurper is under 74 and probably will be uh, nullified there. The uh, cab might want to think about dealing with these carnage sentries and then maybe getting out of the hell out of dodge because there is not a lot of uh, 
reinforcements on the way. The Javelin's getting a good volley off here, killing a lot of these knights. Uh, they've got one volley off. Will they get a second? No, they won't. There you go, the knights flash the uh, sentries in. They want to kind of just like finish these guys off if they can. Another charge coming from Noldor into questions. Some elite elven cab now coming in. And they're going to go in and do a second charge. They're going to just try and hack down as many of these guys as they can. They just need to keep these guys engaged so they can't throw javelins. Really, the knights need to... Oh, they've actually gone in for another charge there on the usurpers. They probably want to try and go after some of these uh, these swords. Maybe we're going to get a charge into the Aduna Quarry. No, they're going to change their, change their target and retreat, maybe. They should definitely go for the Aduna Quarry. It's a perfect unit to go for. There we go. Charging a heavily armored shock infantry at that cab there. If you charge infantry at cab, you're just making the situation worse. You better just stand your ground, try and brace if you can. And yeah, the Aduna Quarry there losing a lot of troops down from 110 to 80 in that one charge. That's brutal. Again, the uh, Javi's going out, doing more damage into the Knights there, but the Knights come in once again. They're going to smash into those sentries. They'll probably route them there. There you go. The Knights and the Equestrians together working very well, and they can get those Elven uh, cab back if they want back through the gate Dicks now. It looks like the, the uh, Rohirrim might news. stay outside and just cause a few more issues. Their Umbar lost a lot of infantry there. I mean, he's not got really any swords left. His last two are inside the settlement, losing right now, and uh, it looks like... I mean, the reinforcements from... Well, he has got more swords, I guess, but just no, like, mid-tier ones. The elites are about to come up. But he's about to send up archers, which is pretty good. It might scare off the defenders away from the walls. And then it's pole arms to go in next. And shock infantry, uh, which is, you know, an archer's dream. Both of those units have zero missile block chance. Over on this side, we now also have early men at arms holding here against runic savages. The savages probably are going to do okay against these spears if they weren't already getting shot. But yeah, they've also sent up more spears at these things, which are not going to be able to hold very well. They're not going to be able to attack very easy to hold. That's what they'll do. Spears against spears, no one's really going to do much killing here. Both are designed just to, to hold the line, let other boys do the killing. Got archers firing, very like Bowman, focusing down the elite Noldorian archers. This is a very good idea. I mean, obviously, the elves' archers are famed throughout Middle Earth. So, yeah, to kill these guys off would be very, very good. A big asset for the uh, attackers if they can get rid of them. And they have a lot of ammo. They're already down to 56. I'd start to pull these guys back. Like, the Noldorian archers do not need to be this close to the front lines to uh, actually do some damage. And they're just dueling with the uh, very like Bowman here. There you go. They're going to be it. That's the unit pretty much gone. We've got Haven Watches here. It's a levy bow uh, unit, which I barely ever see being brought. These are light bow infantry. They're probably also going to suffer if they get focused down. And then, yeah, it looks like uh, they really cashed out on those Haven Watches. Didn't really. They brought a couple of Noldorian ones, but mainly uh, Haven uh, Archers by those. Well, I think it's 50-50, actually. We've got lots of Noldorian swords waiting inside the settlement as well. Shipwright Nobles. Looks like they're really making like a, a layered defense here of the defenders. I don't know how wise an idea that is. Um, we've got Helming Gas as well, a really good bow unit for Rohan that can also be brought in. I just, yeah, mount up all the archers that uh, they need here and just start firing down into the into the uh, the archers here that the uh, Eastlings have. So yeah, just use that massive mountain to your advantage. Don't use this hill. Enemy units have rallied and returned to the battle. But yeah, just yeah, sit up there. And, but yeah, I don't know about a, a layered defense being a wise idea. I think you probably want to try and uh, hold at the at the front lines and then maybe try and retreat as a... As a one unit, not as like this a little bit. Dead in here, you know, making sure his capital is well defended as he needs to. We'll see. Looks like they are bringing up uh, their reserves, like Helming Gas were left in reserve and now being brought forward. And as you can see, Rohan, they've been pushed back from the wall. His axe day is getting surrounded and cut down by Umbar Usurpers. They are absorbing a lot of arrows. You know, these Umbar Usurpers are nearly all dead themselves, so. Job's kind of been done there. They, I think they did a lot of damage at that first wall. So, I mean, the, like what they lost, they got an axe thing, uh, and not even, I think that was about it. The early retainers and the early men at arms are still intact, as you can see here. And the axe thing's actually going to get out of here with 36 legends left. Oh, well, they're dropping a bit now. Oh, and there you go. They routed. I take it back. Those legends broke, broke and died. 
Uh, but yeah, Umbai servers, they took out about the four of those units. The and they've also done a serious amount of damage to Duna Corey here, as you can see. And also uh, Akane Sentry as well. So they've taken out a fair few units, you know. They've, they've done well. Um, it does look like they've contained the cav now. I would just get this cav back inside. The early knights are no going to be no use here while there's Black Haven sentries watching this pass. I mean, they are one of the best looking units I think Umbar has. I do like the Black Haven sort of looking units. Look at them. Look awesome. Like the uh, like the detail on the armor as well. I mean, like this is like a sub mod. This isn't the official mod of doing this. This is very very cool. So, yeah, Umbar has got to be one of the coolest looking factions. That is for sure. Look at that. Looking awesome. Very very cool. And uh, yeah, it looks like Aduna Nakori now coming in. This this uh, Umbar player being a bit a bit silly, just sending these guys forward all in one mass as well. And he's just going to encourage blobbing, and also then they're just going to focus these guys down. Like we've got Helming Gas here. Looks like we've got Yeoman of the Mark as well for Rohan. And yeah, these guys, if they just even if they stand here, they're just going to get shot. If they charge in, they're going to get shot. Yeah, it looks like one is going to be sacrificed. The other two just need to get back. I think anywhere in this sort of compound, they're in danger of being shot by the Helming Gas. Yeah, they do need to be careful. They're just throwing in just their elite shock infantry, which are going to be the guys that are going to get them through this siege. If they're going to win, it's going to be through these elite sort of shock infantry, which are now getting, yeah, focused down. These guys losing 20 or so men. But yeah, the Aduna Corey here, they could probably chop their way through most of this Rohan infantry if they wanted to. In they go. These angry Numenorians flying on in, slicing heads. There you go, the Archers coming in now, they've drooned their bit. They're trying to even up this fight. Yeah, you can see already the Aduna Corey winning this fight here against early men at arms. But uh, yeah, they're starting to lose as well. And that's because of those Archers up there. They are turning that in back in favor of the Spears. Even the early retainer, if that gets thrown in, that should help hold the line quite nicely. Again, Corsair Archers coming inside the settlement. I mean, really, the Archers here for the defenders could just sort of focus this down if they wanted to. And just basically reduce the capability of the attackers if they wanted to. Looks like the defenders have fallen back uh, from that initial sort of choke point over here where they were holding with Rohan and it looks like the Noldorian Spears are holding back, well, two spear units and a shock infantry again. I don't see why they're bringing so, much, so many spears, these things. Just bring, just bring shock and, sort, and like Loki and Mace them. That's all you need. And archers, of course. Yeah, we've got Veliag Warriors in here. Looking very much like their uh, sort of like from the steps of Eastern Steps. And they are, I mean, in both Middle Earth, and they also look like they're from like the Eastern Steps, sort of like in our world. Sort of like where a Turk's all looking a bit Turkish. Yeah, they're very cool. I do like the uh, the very uh, uniforms. And it's an old Orin Arch still here, I've not died. We focused down so much. They're still not being killed off. They've been allowed to use up so much of their ammo. Unless that's the other one, it might be, to be honest. Uh, no, there is the other one. So yeah, they are just focusing down one slowly. Spears are losing here, and they were temporarily. Looks like they have stabilized. Noldorian swords in here, though, for the elves. They're certainly going to turn this back in favor of the Noldorian host. Golden armor shining. They're looking a little bit dull, actually. I mean, I, I, I'm fine with that. I don't think they should look like too bright and shining. This is kind of like the idea that like we're in the third age. The elves just aren't as good as they used to be. Maybe the glow in their armor is kind of representing that. Now I thought, feel like I'm sounding like an English teacher. Because I'm like, so what does the gold represent? There you go. Uh, I thought maybe these guys are broken, but they haven't. I think they're going to need more infantry up here soon. Of these things, these clan guards are pretty depleted, and the very eggs, 71 of them left, are not going to carve through all of those elves. Very Ag Bowman are now getting shot down. We have got some Loki Rim Archers as well. Just getting targeted. These are Very Ag's late game can act quite nicely as a hybrid unit. They have got a sword and a shield. So they do actually act quite nicely as a uh, as a sort of a, a hybrid unit. They're not quite as good as like say like the Helming Gas, but they're still pretty decent as a hybrid unit. They've got a sword shield and a bow. Very useful if you're you know running out of men bring those up. We've got Carnage sentries here as well, so it looks like they've decided to uh, choose these guys because of the javelins instead of like having the macemen, uh, which are much more heavily armoured and a bit more iconic. Uh, but yeah, these Carnage sentries uh, do have javelins, which I'm guessing they're just anticipating 
sort of the, the a pike stack at the end, but there isn't really anything. There's certainly no Noldorian uh, pole arms. Um, maybe they're just thinking they're just going to have to use the Javis to get through maybe just better infantry. Uh, but I, with Rohan, I wouldn't say they had much better infantry. But yeah, there's still a lot of spears, which is my concern. There's still two nut whole clan guards here. Just, I think I might have decent missile block, I imagine. They're not that great for pushing through. I bet they're not getting many kills. If any have them over 100, I'll be surprised. Vireg Warriors here, slowly dying off. It's a healthy one as well, 95 and they're dying. They're focusing down these Vireg's now. So what the attackers were doing earlier to the defenders, focusing down archers systematically, the defenders are now doing to the attackers. Yeah, Helming Gas here. And the uh, Haven Watchers are really systematically focusing down these Eastling archers who are coming up one by one. And I think the idea that they were trying to do is shoot into the back of this Noldorian, saw, uh, this Noldorian sphere here and dislodge that. But it doesn't seem like they're having much joy in doing that. And yeah, the Eastling player here is trying to cycle charge with his very Warriors, I think, to try and break through. Get that charge bonus with the Shock Infantry to inflict as much damage as possible to the Noldorian spears. It's not working. And it looks like we're going to see Javelins brought up instead to maybe try and uh, destroy the spear line. But uh, I imagine their missile blocks are relatively decent. And look at this. They are through. The Umbar is through over here. They've not been paying much attention to it, but it had seen like Rohan hadn't put much here when it came to reserves. And it looks like we're now going to see an Elven charge from the Equestrians. They have found some very vulnerable looking Uduna Kori right now. And they are going to charge in. There's also some Arfanas and Asgard. All of this is not spears, which is the only thing they can really stop. This charge right now. Or pole arms, I guess. But yeah, a good charge there from the Equestrians in some very elite. Oh, for us a nice guy. Look at that dropping from 110 already to 70. Brilliant charge there. The Aduna Kori also suffering some losses as well. They managed to sort of run out of there, but the oh, Alpha nice guy really took the brunt of that charge. There you go. Really good. And these guys have only lost five, six troopers. Impressive. Now we're going to see a charge from the early knights. They're going to do the same thing. Hopefully, going to still a sort of result. Still, I'd just like to say, no pole arms and spears around. Another charge there. Onto the same Alfraz and Asgar. And again, I'm sure, yeah, they're going to start dropping. Yeah, down to 53. And this unit's probably got 10 kills. Probably, for, And they'll all be all, all cavalry, granted. But, yeah, it's pretty much a wasted unit now. That's unfortunate there for the attackers. Certainly, Umbar has been a bit frivolous with his elites, I'd say. Look at these things. I do love the Eastling uniforms. They look great. With the banner as well. That's, I feel like it's been redone. I don't feel like that used to be the uh, banner they used to have for these guys. I think we like the Storm Riders. Again, they got a, a new sort of like banner system for these things as well, which is good. These things, you know, one of the older factions getting a bit of love, which is great to see. Carnage sentries are there coming forward. They're going to again do the same thing here, try and jabby their way through. And the elves getting, yeah, focused down with the javelins. The spin, thin Noldorian spear line. Seven of them left. I don't think they're going to waste the javelins on them. Yeah, the elves are actually going to go in. They're not going to let the Carnage uh, Sentinels do it anyway. And these seven brave elves are going to hold on. Give their immortal lives for the cause to defend Edoras. Yes, if you're enjoying all things Dawnless Days and like to see some more Lord of the Rings content on the channel, do remember to leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, guys. And feel free to uh, leave a comment to show your support and all that shenanigans. And if you haven't uh, hit that notification bell, make sure you do so you don't miss out on any Dawn's Day's content on the channel. And then these clan guards now facing off against the Noldorian swords. Yeah, they're going to get butchered. I think they need to just try and hold to allow the Carnage Sentries to do their work with the Javelins. But they're forming Shield War, which I think means they can't throw the Javelins. And there you go. They've managed to catch the Sentries already. So that that's fine. Um, the charging from the cab over here, though it was great, uh, very effective, all it's really done is slowed down the... Uh, the attack they haven't exactly like stopped them you know pole arms leading the way so the cav can no longer do any charging and it looks like the defenders are retreating now to a single choke point here and they're going to try and use this as their defense we've got some archer towers here so that they can also support them which is good 
But yeah, this is where it starts to get a bit grindy on Edoras. They've The open the part is kind of now being fleeing. lost. And the defenders now with their mere 1,900 against 2,500 are uh, defending a single choke point. And I think they've got a good chance. Those numbers aren't too bad for them. It looks like they're going to use the Haven Watchers here to try and get all the supply barrels used up, which is a good idea. Hopefully they've used all their supply barrels, maxed all, max all their uses out. But we'll see. It looks like, I thought maybe we were going to see a charge, but I guess this is why they're bringing clan guards, is because they can form square, maybe they were worried about the cav sally outs, and they were like, let's just bring spears instead. Um, I guess it's precaution, but it's a risk you just got to take, I think, because if you don't sally out, then you just get entering the city with a lot of spears, which can't really break through. Uh, luckily, there aren't many of them left. There aren't many Eastlings generally left. They've got an arch unit here with full ammo. Uh, this very egg bowman here is also not doing too bad for ammunition as well. But yeah, they haven't got many swords left. We've got some wards of rune to go in. We've got a ward rune there. Um, but yeah, they, they've not really got much left when it comes to pushing power. A few shock infantry units. Um, and, but yeah, Umbar's still got a couple of swords. And there's a Duna Quarry have seen better days. And these archers still have a lot of ammo, which they're going to need to use if they want to have any hope of breaking through. They should try and use this ramp here once these early knights have been removed to try and shoot into the side of that. Or maybe just come down this ramp and go up the other way. Uh, where the equestrians are and use that ramp to also uh, flank around. It's not really a single choke point. It can become one if you retreat to about here. Which is usually where most players retreat to. But it looks like the defenders are making it a little bit fairer for the attackers and they're leaving another option open, a flanking option if they want it. I think we're about to see Incarnate sentries go in. They're not slowing down this attack. I'm gonna send these guys in. They're going to start hacking and slashing at them. In you go, boys. No? They're going to wait. They haven't got javelins to throw. They're just going to be waiting. Maybe they're just going to just send two at a time. We'll be fighting against guards of Muda Cells. So these are the elite spears for Rohan. If you've never seen these guys before. They look goddamn sexy as they do. One of the better looking Rohan units. One of the better looking units in the whole mod, I'd say. They look amazing, in my opinion. I mean, just look like they're straight out of the movies. Look at that. Oh, it's beautiful. It really, really is. Hey, there you go. You can see the carnage surgery. They're going to retreat. So, uh, yeah, I'll make a quick cut here and we'll return. Once some action gets underway, because it looks like the early knights here aren't going to be engaging because the spears protecting that shock. But it does look as though. It does look as though uh, the, uh, the yeoman might give them a go. But yeah, I'll see you guys in a moment once the battle recommences. So we are back. It wasn't long, and yeah, it seems as though the elves and also the men of Rowan have made a devious little trick here. They managed to rout this clan guard as well in this play. So basically, they were baiting. Um, these two units to come forward trying to capture the gate and the Noldoran questions came through the gate charged these wards rune in the side here and then the clan guards reacted and then the Erling knights came in and did their bit as well and charged into the warlords of rune so, yeah so a very elite shock infantry here has kind of been dealt with I mean it's pretty bad at, yeah 53 out of 120 and they've pretty much been used up there might be a lot of dead horsemen after this and the Noldoran questions might be locked outside we'll see but the uh, wards of rune here pretty much been devastated. We'll have to see whether this cav unit can somehow get back in. I don't think there are any friendly gates for it to do so. This is the final one. So it's a do or die here for the equations. They don't want to get locked out of the uh, out of the city unless they have to, you know, maybe just like dismount and use one of the siege towers to get back in. But they don't want to be doing that either. They want to uh, want to be used elsewhere. We've got a Balky McGann here. Umbar's general. He's looking like he's going to try and block this gate and they're going to capture it. And yeah, that's the, uh, the elves. Uh, cavalry kind of redundant here. I think they're going to have to go all the way around here. Whether they can go through the gate, I don't know whether oil will be activated. Uh, it does say with oil the gatehouse. Whether it will have any, I don't know. Um, but then they could also just dismount and uh, use the towers. Uh, if they dismounted, I guess, um, use the towers, capture the gate, then remount it, then the cav would be effective once again and could be a pest. So we'll see whether they do that. Enemy units have been rallied. But again, it just seems like we're back to sort of a bit of cold war right now about what's going on. So just fast forward a little bit. 
see whether the anything happens. There you go, the, the gates have been captured. So yes, now those Elven Cav are stuck outside the walls. They can't do much uh, until I think, yeah, if the player realizes he can just go round, land, uh, so yeah, like dismount here, land uh, his infantry, well, his cavalry, and then capture it. There's no towers as well here to shoot at his uh, horses and scare them off. And then he can just remount, and then he can come back inside. Or he might be able to use, uh, just go in without. Oil. If they've got no oil, he could risk it. The whole unit if he wanted to make sure, then that would be the way I'd do it. Um, but yeah, these Noldor in questions hidden now, so they're not going to do too much. But it looks like we might finally see an attack here. It looks like these things might be about to go in with some uh, combined support. Looks like very small. Well, half strength to do before he's going in. Getting shot down already. The Dune Corey are just magnets for archers. They are very good at killing spears. And these guards move to sell. Could be about to lose quite a few warriors here. But the archers for the elves are going to break up their charge. That's a good little play there by the elven player. Sacrificing a little unit. He's not really going to contribute too much. But he's going to help break that charge up. And the Dune Corey are going to get into the uh, spears. But the charge is much, much worse. There you go, in they go. Clash with his guards and himself there. And oh he's gonna go all the way around here. Is he thinking about using this gate? I don't know. I guess that one maybe is better, but neither is exactly uh yeah, neither are optimal gates to use. But I just either will do. He's got Helding gas in it now, so that's not a good sign for Rohan that Elite Arch is running out of ammo. But, uh, like I said earlier, very good hybrids. Good axe and shield combo they have. They can always replace their bows with those axe and shields. Hopefully they'll be okay. The grind continues. This is really the only fight. This is pretty much how Edras kind of turns into a single sort of single chest fight between the whole thing. There you go, Helm and Gas losing, but they are. Now they're going to do okay. Now. There's a lot of archers left for the defenders. We don't seem like they have much left. And there you go, the cab is in. I don't think there was oil. Uh, I need to know if I've a this, but yeah, the Noldor in a question just ran in, no oil. They were that speed of the oil. The boys manning the gate just couldn't tip the oil in time. But there you go. Now all of these uh, shock infantry and swords here are pretty much vulnerable to the cab. They wa wanted to charge in and go for them. And we have some shit right now, but they have decided to use this other choke one here, have the attack is good. They need to stretch the defenders out. There's only a 200 man difference. They need to make those 200 men pay. Ship right over against Alphardas and Asgard, a clash of elite. Shocking to join the fight, trying to get a bit of an advantage. Whether they could have flanked there. Like this gap here is looking very useful. A flank to the Shocking to there, maybe. But uh, yeah, the Cav coming in, I'm kind of intrigued to see where that's going to go. Probably it's going to go for a charge here on the Adun Or maybe for all of these archers back here. Maybe the Umbar player is not paying attention. He is definitely not paying attention. He's going to go for a charge here on these archers. I don't think he air. Oh, you go for rear charge onto the sentries here. That could be pretty deadly, but the archers, all full ammo. Be a huge win. Yeah, he's going for the sentries. A rear charge into some pole arms here. Could be devastating. Is he going to turn around in time? No, he's not. I'd say that was probably not in time. And there you go. A devastating charge into the sentries. Doing a lot of damage to them. Definitely is a prime target to try and take out. And there you go. He's going to now get out of that. And he's going to go in for the Corsair archers. And I don't know if he can go through... I think he can go through all these little streets here, so he might be able to get out of this. Still, these uh, Elven Cav will fight pretty much the last man of the last Elf. 
charging into all these Corsairs down there, trying to cause as much havoc as possible. I don't think he'll kill many of them. We'll see. He's yeah, doing a little bit of damage to all of them, and he's maybe he can try and get out and sneak around, or he's going to bounce out and go for the sentries, I think. Who are running forwards. So there you go. Yeah, another good charge. It's there. That's a brilliant charge, actually. Knocked a full unit over. I can almost justify a pull through there because that full unit just got evaporated. And well, I don't know, I would have carried on fighting that. I think he might have might have broken his way out, but he's gonna keep bouncing around. There you go. He actually has managed to get a way out if he wanted it. It looks like the Elven player is just gonna just keep these guys engaged, keep fighting these Corsair Archers, and that might be the end of these equestrians. Uh, maybe not, he's gonna try and get out of there. There you go, he's a little bit dubious now he did. He maybe should have pulled out and gone around, but he did his bit. Pathfinding's always a bit of a pain. There you go. He's actually managed to again charge. Again, he's charged these Corsairs. These guys tire really hard. Like these, uh, these Elven Cav, just, they don't seem to fatigue. That might be a pull through. I don't know. It's, the unit, Both units are kind of moving, kind of trying to get into position. Yeah, there you go. The Equestrians causing all sorts of problems there. And I think they might be finally about to die. I just charge, charge the Dunicori, you know, one last hurrah, there you go, nice charge again. These equations must have got like four or five hundred kills, they've definitely made themselves like worth it, they've done a lot of work here. They've got their money's worth out of these guys. Thirteen of them left, they'll kill a couple more, kill a couple more guys I imagine. And there you go, I think we're about to see the downfall of these elves. They fought hard though. Pretty much died. I think they might have died to a last man pretty much down there. Incredible stuff from Linden there. Not a big fan of the guards. Moodus up being left here to fight on the road. I feel like, I mean, maybe they're just fought, pulling these guys back so they're out of archer range. But yeah, I'd just keep throwing in units if you can. You know, in the mark, throw them in. Why not? Just extra bodies into the fight. Uh, looks like, yeah, the shipmen are being uh, pulled back. They are getting shot on the back here slowly by Veriags. We have got Helden Gas in the holding line again, showing their, showing their worth, holding up quite nicely against the uh, Arthras and Asgar there. Yeah. Fighting on hard, it's doing a good job, and yeah, the Arthras and Asgar are losing now because I mean, they are in a 2v1, but I mean, they are also two pretty good units. I'm pretty sure I remember the Helmingas being elite. Maybe they're trained now. I did not realize they got... I feel like they used to be elite, but maybe they've always been trained. Um, they definitely, I feel like, at one point were. Maybe they just reduced them to two OP. A lot of swords in this starting to die though for the attackers. These fresh Noldorian swords coming in, uh, dealing with the very weakened Eastling units that have been in combat for quite a while. Uh, it looks like also these things are running out of ammo, so it looks like those Noldorian swords are going to become pretty invulnerable. Uh, it looks like the Corsair still have plenty Enemy of ammo though to use. Rallied. These guys need to maybe replace the very axe in this uh, sort of on this slope here and just start shooting into the side. Make this choke point untenable for the Defenders, just make it really hard, really squeeze them. You can just focus fire one unit at a time with all of those Corsairs. You can do a lot of damage. And it looks like the attackers are going to break through here. These Arthras and Asgar defeating the shipwright nobles. They are getting arch support ever so slightly. They're helping gas as well, just not able to withstand these golden boys. Arthras and Asgard, they've done a lot of chevrons, I don't know if they start with this many, but yeah, they've done well. Cut through a lot of these guys, I don't think they are going to make it through, they are wavering first. These elven shipwright nobles just do not 
want to break. I mean, they are wavering now, but I think either side could break here first. And the uh, Helmingast, yeah, also starting to win this fight here. But uh, the Wards are rude. I think they might come in and finish the job that those Arthros and Nascar started there. They could do with some support. Like these archers, you open the mark, get them over here, start shooting that general. Break these things morale by shooting that shock infantry general. I'm really surprised he brought brought one because it's so vulnerable to archer fire. Like your general can just get poked down and killed. And then you'd be like, well great, I have no general, no, no morale because I brought a, a shock infantry general. And I'm fighting the elves as, as well. well. The elves are renowned for their archers, they'll just shoot your archer, shoot your general if you get a chance. The elves there again battling. Tarnas has got a decent charge there. And yeah, the elves falling back behind. Safety for the guards move itself. Hold on, boys. We're nearly through them all. There you go, the shock and she goes back in. See whether they can break these guys. I don't know, they might do. They might do. The archers are getting a little bit close. I don't know. Oh, they're shooting into the back of this ship right now. But it's, here's the next line of defense for the uh, for the defenders. It's all like we're going to try and hold. And it's not a bad idea from the course. Their archers try and shoot into the side. But again, I feel like you could do it from the ramp over here. Uh, just set up on this ramp and then shoot into the side of these ship right nobles. I mean, back shots are definitely better than side shots. But they're not able to get them all to set up properly. They're all obstructing each other at the moment. And they're all getting and they're also getting shot by Noldorian archers here who are about to run out of ammo. That'll be the final sort of volley there in a moment for the defenders. And I think we're about to see, yeah, the walls of Rune go in. So he's actually about to become invulnerable. So he is lucky that, oh, well, actually, no, maybe not. There's still Yum in the market with a reasonable amount of ammo. They should be turning that onto the uh, walls of Rune down here. Trying to focus him down. I was about to say, yeah, very lucky for the walls of Rune general here that he was the defenders are nearly about to run out of ammo but they've still got a little bit left a little bit in the tank got some haven watches here they're about to go in One of our units has used there he goes the owner of the mark just needs to turn their shots onto this wall of rune here looks like we're also going to see the other general and the pole arm move back up An towards the center looks perished. like this is where they're going to try and make a push after us and Asgard needs to get maybe sent sent in soon because it looks like the attackers again running low on reserves and just reinforcements here. It does seem like, I mean, there's a lot of archers in here. But it just seems like the defenders outnumber the attackers in this small choke point. These Haven watchers can, I mean, they're losing decisively, but I'm sure they're still getting a few kills here and there. Balance power is starting to shift in favor of the defenders as well. 1,100 against 900 uh, attackers. And it does look as like that uh, general, that Ward of Rune general for these things is losing over here. Shipwright Noble's going in, yeah, he's not able to break through. I don't know if the archers are supporting, but it looks like we're about to, though. The Omen start firing some shots. Oh, also, the watchtower that's shooting in here. They're shooting over here instead of just the one right in front of it. I'd be, I'd be so pissed if I was an attacker and I saw that. That would be something I would have probably wanted to take out. If you had this ammo, this amount of ammo left, the sheer amount of ammo, you should at least be trying to burn that siege, that watchtower down, make it a little bit easier for your attackers, allies on that side there. But it looks like they're going to fall back shipwrights and let the Haven Watch do all the work, which is just allowing those wards of rune to win. Um, but yeah, they need to use this ammo somehow. They have all this ammo doing nothing right now. It needs to be just shot into something. I mean, the elves have a lot of shock infantry that can be just shot to pieces. Archers also have zero missile block chance, all very vulnerable. And that's a large percentage of the army left for the defenders here. Um, but yeah, they need to do something and quick to the attacks because they are running out of reserves that Arfaz and Asgard and the pole arms might need to get sent in soon. Which is also another asset I guess they have is these pole arms. Um, like the defenders don't have any pole arms at all. They have archers though, they can still shoot with them. Still have Thaedin and two fresh guards and cell back here. Holden, I'm surprised they've not been brought forward. I'd bring everything forward if I was a defender now. You're Holden here. Make you stand here, I think you can do it. Bounce power says you can do it. The 
Silver Boys of the Shipwright Nobles. Yeah, I think they're just better than the Wards of Rune. Both elites, but yeah, just Elven elites. Now we're going to see Noldorian Swords go in. And they're going to finish off those uh, Eastlings, and I think the Eastlings might be out of men anyway, so it's not the end of the world. And there you go. The that is the Eastling General, general is dead. dead. And that is at the end of that assault on that front there. We are seeing a mass route, though, from the defenders here. A lot of archers broke. I think that's just that fresh off. Oh, Razan Iskar winning there and just absolutely just trampled through these archers. Cutting them down. And there you go. On to the next phase of the attack. Into these guards and Mutasel. Take them out. That is... Uh, all you've got to break through. I mean, these elves can turn around and help out, and they should. Looks like we're going to see the Shipwright Noble come down. It looks like the elves are quite happy to just stand and fight at this point. And I, I think they should. I think they just need to retreat any further back. <laughs> Guards just need to hold a little bit longer. The elves are coming. Here we go, the elves are coming. They'll save that Rohirrim line. The Rohirrim might die here. But at least the elves are here to hold the line now. There's a general going in there, so yeah. Linden risking it all. And we're now seeing the uh, archer ammo, I think, being expended onto those Blackhaven sentries. That's what they saved the ammo for. It's not a bad thing to save it for. Uh, Shirai Noble's here, also being set in the weakened one. Trying to hit these guys. I mean, that's the thing with this, these archer towers that just scattered throughout Edoras. Are helping. They definitely are. And also, another way to counter the sentries, even if they had no ammo left, those watchtowers would, would help. And even if they uh, lost there, I think there's a further. There might be more watchtowers. Yeah, there's more up here. Like, there's another watchtower here they could use. And there's another one right at the top over there as well. So they've got pl and there's more over here. So they have plenty more that they could use if they wanted to, to really uh, put the pain onto the attackers. Edoras is a really tough settlement to hold, like to attack. And the attackers have really done it though. It's very close, 688 uh, defenders against 550 attackers. I don't know if they're going to do it here today, but they were very close. That cow, I think, just gave the defenders the edge. They just brought a little bit of cap themselves, maybe the attackers. Stop Rohan and Linden sallying out. Might, might have made a big difference. They lost three or four units of cab charges alone. And a lot of their elites wounded. They're doing the Corians, means Arthras and Asgard just got pounded by uh, Elven Cav. They really did. And now it's just, yeah, everything's getting thrown in. Guards mood to sell. Looks like Theoden's going to go around. He's seen some free kills on these Corsair archers here. And yeah, go and, go and get your KD up, uh, Thil Theoden. You deserve it. You deserve it. After your city's burned and suffered so much in the siege. Yeah, if you have any glorious Dormus Day sieges or any Total War replay that you want to send in yourself, feel free to send it into my Discord. The link is down below in the description. As always, guys, it's the best place to go to send in any replays or to take part in any Dormus Day battles. And yeah, I'm always looking for new Dawn Stays replays to cover and feature on the channel. You guys do seem to love watching it. I do enjoy showing it off. There you go, more arch fight coming out. That is the Corsairs. Um, yeah, and we also have uh, Elven Shock going around as well. So they're really making sure that they take these arches out. I mean, the Shock is going to get shot itself by arches. I don't know if that's really a wise idea to send them in. Yeah, I would say they didn't. Just let they didn't run these guys down. Don't need to do anything else. Here we go. There it is. Bizarre. Knights of Rohan. There you go. Flattened. I feel sad. Really did. And there you go. The shock's going to go in and support. Yeah, there's literally no Corsairs here, so you can almost just go through. And into the next ones. Yet to lose a rider as well. There you go. He might not lose one. Still going to get a 100 or so kills. There you go. Turn these guys down. And there we have a mass route, I think, from the attackers and a Pyrrhic victory for Linden and its Rohirrim allies. And we'll end the replay and have a quick look at those end results.
So yeah, this was sent in from the perspective of a uh, UK Barnet man who was playing as uh, Linden. So uh, thank you very much, man, for sending this one in. 169 kills, these Noldorian swords. 160 there with the Shipwright Nobles. 332 with another Noldorian sword. Excellent stuff. The Spears getting 268, which is still very impressive. 189 and 193 kills with the Haven Watchers. Definitely, uh, they did well. You know, cheap archers getting a lot of kills is very good to see. One of the Noldorian archers getting 198 kills. And then that Cav, 473 kills is very, very nice. And then we have Dutch Wolf playing as of Rohan. 106 kills with King Third in here right at the end. 147 kills with his Retainers. 135 kills with the Erling Men at Arms. Uh, 166 with the Yeoman of the Mark, 212, 275, uh, sorry, 175 with the Helming Gas and 235 kills with the Erling Knights. Then we have Sip of Sun Scorch playing as the Eastlings, 166 kills with the Wards of Rune here. Uh, then we've got 162 kills with his Wards of Rune there. Yeah, a lot of spears, but yeah, not many kills for these guys, 50, 42. The archers, 122 and 107 kills with the Variags. Then we have Rex North playing as the other Umbar army. Uh, 195 kills with his Umbar Usurpers there, 114 kills with the Arfraz and Asgar, 158 with another one there, 106 with the Adun and Kori. He has archers and pole arms really not getting many kills there. But there you go, guys. That is today's siege battle. Edoras has been defended by the men of Rohan and the elves of Linden. It's a glorious day for the forces of good. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.